go into the window drop down menu and select slide notes and that's going to open up the slide notes panel and if you go here you'll see this little button for text to speech right here if you can see that on my desktop there you click that and uh, what you're going to do is uh, click the plus icon but first of all you probably want to select your text-to-speech agent they're called uh, now if you're only seeing Microsoft David and Microsoft Zira which are terrible text-to-speech voices you will see actually also a link down here to download the extra install um, and actually I have a video um, if you do a search for Adobe Captivate secret downloads or something like that it shows you where you can download that separately as well but once that's installed you'll have all of these additional choices and they are quite frankly better um, than what's included with your operating system if you're on a Mac you'll see a completely different list of names because uh, the Mac actually comes with quite a few speech agents included but I'm going to use James here for for arguments sake I'm going to hit plus and then uh, I type in whatever it is that I want it to say. Now I often, uh, just as a side note here, I often use the very same text for my text-to-speech as I would for my closed captioning later on. So I usually break these apart into sentences. So I might say, Welcome to the emergency evacuation online course and we'll hit plus again click the start button to proceed right it could be as simple as that once I've typed in a couple of lines of text like this I can generate the audio and uh, it's gonna say are you sure you want to change the audio for slide one I already had some audio here but that's okay I'm gonna click yes and I can hit close now and you'll see that I have the text-to-speech all typed out I can edit it right from the slide notes page if I wish but I will need to go back into the speech management window to regenerate that if I need to edit it or update it with new text now if I wish to make this part of my closed captioning as well and again that's not I know that's not part of your question John but it is something eventually you're gonna want to do uh, just tick off the checkbox for the second column here and if you click on the closed captioning button above it uh, I like to drop this number down to 10 so we can very clearly see where the first sentence is and where the second sentence is and you just move these divider lines so that they indicate where the voice starts and that way the closed captioning which is right here it takes it from the very same stuff I typed out uh, will coincide with the audio as well so I hit save and close and on a somewhat related note I know I've I've kind of gone a little bit off topic here you'll see I've got my audio here what I like to do as well uh, obviously if if I'm trying to simulate what a real life course would be like um, you know like an instructor led course uh, when an instructor opens up a PowerPoint slide they don't start talking right away they don't start talking immediately uh, they might pause for a moment look around the class check the slide is on the appropriate slide and then begin speaking all of which might only take half a second so what I do is I usually like to push out my audio um, beyond what I would normally need it for and then have it start about half a second in and then you know there's then there's still a half second afterwards as well this actually solves a problem with audio running together from slide to slide that's sort of a bug that's been persistent I've never encountered it myself but I've heard others complain about that and later when you go into your closed captioning you'll notice that there's that that space will have been added there so you can just adjust your start and stop time for uh, each of those sentences as well hit save close and you're good to go if I preview this you'll hear what it sounds like here welcome to the emergency evacuation online course 
click the start button to proceed. Sounds good. You know, the thing about uh, text to speech is that I think it's good enough for most situations. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, where I've run into problems in the past, and, and John will know what I'm talking about, is when we've done e-learning courses when I worked at the airport, for example. Um, you know, when I've done e-learning courses and I've tried to make it very conversational or tried to have the text-to-speech agent sound like they're one of the gang or one of the employees, that's usually when it falls apart. So I tend to write uh, narration for text-to-speech uh, to be very methodical, very fact-based. Uh, based. I don't try to have the speech agent refer to himself in the first or or herself in the first. Well, I guess I don't even need to assign gender because there really is no gender. Um, but I don't have the agent refer to itself uh, in the first person. So it doesn't say things like, as employees of the company, we all need to do this. I never use uh, text-to-speech for those kind of sentences. I might say, as an employee of the company, you need to do this, but I don't lump in the, the robotic voice of the text-to-speech agent in with that group because that's usually when it breaks down for people and they go, what? That's not an employee, that's a robot. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.